Hi, this is Mario Harrow from the Piano Podcast. This video is to explain some basic chord structures and basic chord symbols at the piano. On one of my YouTube videos, someone named Pink O Love said, in one of your videos, I forget which one, you briefly mentioned how to play chords that have the slash sign, something like G slash B, which you said meant you play it with the second inversion. Actually, it's the first inversion for that particular chord. I was told the second letter is the note you do with your left hand and the first note you do with your right hand. Can you explain? Sure, I tried, uh, well, Pinko Love, if that is your real name. Uh, <laughs> I tried to explain it in the uh, text comment there, but I don't think it translates very well, so I'm gonna uh, do it here in this video because that's what I do. So let me take one of the most basic chords. This is a C major chord, spelled it C-E-G. It's in root position because it has uh, the root, the third, and the fifth, C-E-G lined up right in a row, line, 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 or space, 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 if you're doing it in the left hand. But, uh, when you see the slash, that means uh, oftentimes you can invert that chord and take the C and throw it on top, and we end up with still a C major chord, but it's in what we call the first inversion. C major slash E is the chord symbol that, uh, that we associate with this, just because at this particular time right now, I'm only playing E, G, and C in the right hand, okay? Because E is my bottom note. That's what the slash E means, is what the bottom note is that you play in the chord, all right? Um, so I could invert that yet again to what we call the second inversion, and that would be G, C, E. Same three letters, but now with G on the bottom, hence C major slash G, okay? It doesn't matter where I play it on the piano. If I play it down an octave here or even with my left hand, uh, it's still C major slash G, okay? However, if I take my left hand, which is free at this particular time, and I added a C in the, in the bass, maybe like a, a couple octaves lower. Notice that the slash C goes away, okay? Because it's now, C is my bottom note. Even though I'm still playing a second inversion triad in my right hand, we still realize that as a C major chord symbol, or just a regular C by itself, okay? Uh, same thing goes if I even inverted it here. As long as I have that low C in my left hand, doesn't matter what inversion, that I play in the right hand, as long as it has C, E, G in it, it's still C major, okay? Same thing goes with this D minor chord. This is a D minor chord in second inversion with an A in the bottom, but if I play the D in my left hand, boom, the A goes away like that there, all right? So there's a D minor chord, or if I played, uh, even if I played a root position G major chord, I could play a G on the bottom, in root position, it doesn't change anything there. But if I change the bass note, it changes it to a D on the bottom. Or if I could, if you're looking for that G slash B, you could do it like this with a B on the bottom. Now it depends on what you want to do in the right hand there. You could do it in root position, you could do it in first inversion, you could do it in second inversion, but notice as long as it has the B on the bottom, that's what the G slash B stands for, okay? So again, if just those three chords that I did, I could do a C major. So hopefully that explains to you how we do the chord symbols in a lot of pop sheet music. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, you could subscribe to my podcast on YouTube, also on iTunes, or you could like me on Facebook. Hope this was helpful, and keep on practicing. Bye.